Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Jonathan here with another VectorWorks video. Today we're going to be looking again at making libraries using SketchUp resources. I've got a couple of really good new hacks for you and it's something that I love doing. I've been interested in making libraries for quite some time. These are ones that I sell on my website and I find my clients all over the world find these incredibly useful to really boost their productivity and speed and workflow. So I've actually just created a couple of new ones. If you're interested on Apple computers, some really fantastic low polygon people, an amazing doors pack as well. So do check those out. So let's have a look at how we create these brand new libraries using uh, SketchUp, for example, or other assets that we can import into Vectorworks. This is something I thought would be really helpful for those people who like using SketchUp as um, you know, some really, really good resources available on the warehouse. But how to build those into effective Vectorworks libraries that you can use over and over again. So do enjoy the video. And if you are new around here, I would love it if you drop a like and subscribe. As ever, it really helps the channel really motivates me to make lots of videos for you. Well, thanks for watching and enjoy the video. Let's get started. Okay, so the very first thing we're gonna do is go to the SketchUp 3D Warehouse. And if you search for Windows and Doors, you'll find the file, and I'll put this in the link in the description, um, that you can actually kind of have a look at and download. So if you do want to, you can actually basically download that in the SketchUp file format. And of course, we know that this will import beautifully uh, directly into Vectorworks. And actually SketchUp comes in extremely well in the Vectorworks file. So all we need to do is locate our file we've just downloaded and of course have a look at the file size just to double check it's not too huge. Drag and drop it in and just create render width textures for all the materials that were in that SketchUp file. And now we just click and wait for a few moments while it actually does the importing. Now, depending on how long, um, how large the model is, this can take a little while. You can see it's actually generating some thumbnails for the resource manager down in that bottom sort of corner as we go. So here we go, we're nearly there. Just let it uh, regenerate and suddenly you will notice that we've got a really nice selection of doors and windows that we can kind of work with. Now, of course, these are mainly just 3D symbols they've been converted to. So at the moment, these are just regular sort of Vectorworks uh, 3D symbols, but created from SketchUp. And you'll notice that you have a really nice level of detail if you zoom into them. And some of them are, you know, ones that actually might be a bit more tricky to make in Vectorworks. So the really nice thing about these is we can basically work with them uh, to enhance them, to actually use them within our Vectorworks project quite nicely. So what I'm actually gonna do is just turn off that layer for a second. Now I'm gonna go over to do a magic trick using a little plugin, which is a marionette plugin called Symbol Folder Preview. And I'm just gonna paste this into my document. Now, this is a really nice little gadget and I'll show you what this is all about. It just means I can organize my symbols nice and easily as you need to. Okay, so in order to make this work, we do need to create a folder for Windows and basically then we can actually search that folder for everything that is tagged with Windows just in this particular file. I uh, really like the resource manager, the way you can search it very powerfully, searching all files or just the selected file. We're then gonna drag all of those windows, uh, get them selected and essentially add a tag to them. Okay, so let's just tag them with the tag window and this will make them easier to identify in a second. Now, next up, we can just go and basically drop those into a folder. So to do that, we'll just open up our sidebar and you can see that I've got my Windows folder there where I'm gonna drop them in. Now, this is key and you'll see why this works so well. So now what we do is basically go and make another symbol folder perhaps for the other things. And these are generally sort of doors and door handles, that kind of thing. So let's have a look at how we can kind of work with this. Um, if we scroll down, you'll see I've now got my Windows folder and basically I've also got lots of individual small components. So sometimes what I tend to do is make another folder for those and actually kind of tuck them all away. Uh, so let's actually do this. So let's right click, drag those into the Windows folder. In fact, let's actually kind of make a brand new folder first, sorry. So let's actually create a brand new folder called Components because we don't necessarily want these um, coming into our file loose. And the good thing about when you import symbols is they will bring the folder that they're sub-organized with them. And this is a really nice little tip to keep your files nice and organized as you progress. So we'll drag that into the components. 
Okay, so you'll notice now what we can do is go back to our symbol preview and all we need to do is basically copy the name of the folder that we've created. I mean, it just says Windows. Let's copy that name. And basically over in our object info, we can essentially paste in the key uh, name of that folder. Now, let's turn off the text and what you'll see the symbol preview does, which is really, really nice, is just arrange all of the symbols in the file beautifully with a really nice kind of uh, interactive spacing and numbers of rows and so on as well. So I'm just going to save this file. We've made a bit of progress, so always good to save as you go. And you know, that's something that I've learned the hard way a few times. Um, if you've made some really good progress, just make sure you save. Or, you know, sometimes use the backup system that Vectorworks offers as well. So let's we'll save these into my budding libraries folder in progress. And I think what I'll do, I'll just get those in an XX name to show that this folder is in progress for now. So what we can now do is if we want to, we can change the number of rows and columns and also the spacing between using this wonderful plugin. So just select it and you see we've got the spacing here. Let's change, change this to say two meters and maybe the offset. Let's try that at two meters as well. Let's change the number of rows. Let's have lots of rows, like 10 rows. So you can see it's a really great way to kind of reformat the libraries of all those symbols, get them nice and neatly arranged in the drawing. Sometimes I do this using a line and distributing instead, but I thought it'd be a really nice little trick to show you how to use the symbol preview folder. So what I've now done is essentially duplicated and I've basically taken the text this time and I'm just gonna kind of drag that down as well. So so next up, I'm going to go to one of my ready-made files of JRA doors that I'm actually selling on my website. Take a look at that if you're interested. There's loads of really cool doors in here, but those are Vectorworks native doors. I'm just going to copy through a nice base and basically bring that in. And I just want to see if there's any way that I can kind of like line this up below, just so kind of got a bit of a base uh, for those doors to sort of sit on, just to give a bit more contrast, really. And if we go into the shaded options, I normally like to just sort of show a few things like reflections, just kind of looks nice when you're looking at the model. Okay, so this is a really great way to uh, great, create the library in the first place. And we can always then, when we're ready, explode the marionette object just by ungrouping. And that will mean that um, all of these are just individual symbols on the page. Okay, so we'll ungroup at this stage and you can see now they're just individual 3D symbols. So only use the symbol preview really to kind of get the spacing correct. And then when we're happy, we can just ungroup and explode. Now you can always align and distribute them if required, as I say. Okay, so this is great. Let's look at the next little sort of stage of the process. So what we're gonna do now is make another layer and I'm just gonna kind of do a little kind of test on this layer. I'm just gonna make a wall. Okay, so I'm gonna get my wall tool and let's go over to our wall tool palette on the building shell. And basically I'm just gonna select from my JRA library of walls. Now, if you haven't seen this, this is an amazing library of walls that I've got for sale on the website. And I just find this so incredibly useful in that I've just got like literally loads and loads of different wall types. So what you'll notice is if I could, of course, drag one of those 3D symbols into the wall, okay, and also let's just edit the wall so it's got some 3D height to it. So we'll give it a kind of, let's say, three meter height. And all of my walls um, have a fully classed up. They all spring up to the height that you set your layer at and really, really nice uh, the way they respond. Now, of course, if I drag in the 3D symbol in the wall, it may not sit in the right location. So the very first thing we need to do is get it organized uh, via the center. And I would suggest you get the insertion point absolutely spot on in the center here. So sometimes those SketchUp symbols don't come up quite right. So that's looking good already. And now what we can do is edit the 2D component. If we right click, we can actually generate most of the 2D component. So let's just right click this time. I'm gonna do um, a wireframe instead. So that actually gives me uh, the sort of hidden lines as well as the main bits. So now when I pop out, you can see we've got a really nice 2D preview of our symbol, as well as a nice little 3D aspect to this as well. So these aren't parametric, these are completely sort of independent uh, 3D models of symbols. But the good thing is, you know, these are pretty detailed and they were generated from SketchUp, but imported into Vectorworks. And now I've got these as a library of windows that I can use forever. 
So this is a great way to enhance your library of things like windows and doors and really kind of rapidly pop them into the symbol library so that you could use them in the future. You can see this one here is really detailed and um, it's got some really nice handles and things like this. So I'm just going to basically drop that into the wall. Uh, before I do that though, I'm just going to right click and edit the 3D components. So I just want to kind of like center it as I said before. So just make sure you get that insertion point correctly before you actually make the symbol. Then the second step is to double click and edit the 2D part. And for this, we can right click and generate the 2D using a wireframe. That will kind of make a really nice little kind of like uh, image, if you like, of the window. Now, if you do want to, you can go in and clean this up a bit because it is just a group of lines. And for example, if you do want to, you can kind of like go in, find some of those shapes and sort of beef up things like line weights as well. So, you know, it all depends how much time you want to spend uh, making this sort of 2D representation look as good as it can be. You can actually show things like the line thickness as well. That will really help. So, you know, using things like uh, the line weights, the preview, you can see this window will look quite nice. So let's just kind of eye drop across. And what we'll do is we'll just kind of do the same onto a couple of those extra bits of the jam and just uh, copy the line weights across from there using the eyedropper tool and basically match the thickness. Okay, fantastic. So now we've got a wonderful 2D side. And the great thing is as soon as we drop that in, uh, it will kind of like drop into the wall and we can flip it around and do whatever we need to do just to make it look, you know, really, really professional and very, very detailed. So don't forget, this is a really good way to enhance your VetWords models with really bespoke windows and doors. Now, if you are interested, um, I will be putting this library up onto the website. So take a look at the store and I've got some fantastic libraries for you, including some amazing bundle packs as well. And this makes it very easy to actually create really nice 3D and 2D drawings that look absolutely fantastic with a large amount of detail. Well, everybody, I really do hope you've enjoyed this video. Now, I've been teaching Vectorworks for over 20 years, and I would love to help you or your practice, wherever you are, all over the world, with my online training. I basically got a lot of experience in architecture, landscape, particularly in 3D, BIM, and rendering, all of these things I'm very passionate about. So reach out to me if I can help with any online training for you. It'd be lovely to have a conversation with you about that. Now, don't forget to check out the website uh, for the wonderful libraries that I've been making. Um, some of these are kind of from SketchUp. Some of these are from other sources. But over the years, I've acquired some really, really amazing content I want to share with you. And this will really speed up your workflow using Vectorworks. So take a look at the libraries and the Vectorworks bundle particularly is a really good one to get started. And I promise uh, you won't regret it if you get hold of these too. So thanks so much for watching everybody and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.